we're going to take you through some stationary dynamic warm-up drills uh, that we do uh, once again to prepare our athletes for, for some of the drills that, that we're going to ask them to uh, perform throughout the workout. Okay, the first uh, drill that we're going to ask them to perform is a alternate unilateral forward reach. So basically it's a one leg deadlift, okay, but without weight. We're going to simply shift all of the weight to one leg, put a slight bend in that leg, try to, to a, a focus on driving that bottom heel into the ground. We're going to keep chest out, shoulders back, good posture, and we're going to simply lower ourselves down to the ground in front as the leg comes out and back. One thing that we can do to initiate this movement and what we talk about with any level change is that we always want to initiate the movement with the hip. So imagine pushing this back leg back to touch an imaginary wall behind you. That's going to initiate the movement at the hips and it's going to activate the hamstrings a little more. Okay? All right, guys, here we go. Ready? And go. Alter. Okay, we're going to reach down with both hands. Um, a lot of guys like to reach across and, and perform these contralateral style. Um, that's fine. I like to teach, up, teach uh, our athletes to keep the shoulders square. That's why we like to reach with both hands. And once again, you can see their ankles and knees shake a little bit. This is great for de developing knee and ankle stability, uh, balance, proprioception, and uh, it's great for getting the hamstrings warmed up uh, for competition. Uh, from there, we're going to come back and, re and perform a reverse lunge. Okay, we did a forward lunge earlier. Now we're going to do a reverse lunge with a couple of variations, and I'm going to leave it up to these guys to throw in these variations. Um, as we slide the foot back, we're going to drop the back knee down. We want to maintain good posture. From here, we can reach back to stretch the hip flexors a little bit more, or we can rotate to the front leg to work on rotation. Okay, so both of these incorporate a little bit more, actually quite a bit more balance, okay? So they're more upper level movement than just step, than just stepping back. You can, however, get a lot of good warm up uh, and, uh, and warm up through the hip flexor by just simply putting the hands on the hips, stepping back, pushing the hips forward, and leaning back as you descend into the lunge. All right, guys, reverse lunges, go. And once again, you can reach back up top, you can rotate against the front leg. You can simply put your hands on your hips, whatever you need to do to get warmed up. Now, we're going to work into a uh, what we call a dragon lunge. Okay? With the dragon lunge, you're simply going to stand with your feet nearly aligned. Okay? And we're going to take one foot and step back behind the other foot. So the toes pointed forward, and we're going to squat down with the knee on the wrong side of the heel. And you're going to go down into as deep a position as possible and stand up. Now we're going to bring our feet back to neural alignment again. Step back with the other foot, lunge down as deep as possible, and come back up. Where you're going to feel the stretch here is on the outside of one hip and then the lower quad on the other leg. All right, so dragon lunges, guys. Here we go, ready? And go. So we're gonna step back behind. Nice, drive up, good. And this one really challenges your balance, but it's a tremendous stretch. And the goal would be to get down low enough without touching the knee to the ground that you can get your hips down to your calf. All right, very good here with the flexibility, good mobility. Uh, and good, that's a dragon lunge. Okay, so now we're going to work into one of my favorites uh, for stretching out the inner thigh and the inner part of the hamstring, and it's called an alternate Cossack stretch. With the Cossack stretch, we typically will start with a lateral lunge. So we're just simply going to lunge forward, side to side, and eventually when I give them the command, they're going to simply rock up to this heel, pointing this toe to the sky, and descend into the lowest squat possible. Okay? Now, a couple of points of emphasis for these guys, go ahead and start this drill. Okay, guys, alternate Cossack. You notice that the squatting heel stays flat. So the squatting heel's flat, the other toe is going to roll up so it points to the sky. Okay, 
okay? These guys have outstanding hip mobility. Great athletes have great hips once again. And this is great. I tell you what, the more mobile we become through the hips, uh, the more you're going to improve their athletic movement, decrease uh, the chance of injury. Okay, nice job. Notice how moving around a little bit at the bottom. All right, and beautiful. All right, okay, those are some single leg movements that we um, take our athletes through. We also work through some double leg movements. Okay, so we're going to widen our feet to good squat width. We're going to descend, tracking the knee or the arms through the inner thigh keeping the knees tracking the toes and try to push the chest out and we're going to pry back and forth trying to get our hips as low to the ground as possible so this is just a squat and pry okay go ahead guys squat and pry All right good and pry back and forth work those hips down to the ground as low as you can all of these guys have outstanding hip flexibility and mobility nice job now if these guys Put their hands in between their knees. We're going to work into what we call frog thrusts. So they're going to come back and pop back up and pry some more. Back and come back up, hips down and pry some more. So frog thrusts, go. Pry. Frog thrusts, go. And pry. And one more time. And now hop your feet back, guys, and stay in that position. Now we're going to work through a couple of yoga postures. We're going to work up into an upward facing dog. Hands will be under the shoulders, fingers going forward. We're going to simply drop the hips down, up to the sky. And then we're going to kick the hips up and back, working the heels to the ground, straight legs, chin to the chest, chest to the toes. And we're going to simply work back and forth in what the Russians call a pump stretch. So, our terminology, this is the pump stretch. Working on flexion and extension of the spine, getting warmed up. All right, now from here, we can work into a one leg pump stretch. So I'm gonna ask these guys to narrow their feet a little bit. All right, and they're gonna work up to a three legged dog as they go to the downward facing dog. Okay, this really puts a nice stretch on the hamstrings, activates the core a little bit, put it down. They're gonna switch feet now. Come back up. Nice. And let's go ahead and come back to the pump stretch now. And let's work into a Hindu push-up. Now with the Hindu push-up, with the Hindu push-up, we're simply going to pull our elbows to our side, dive down as if we're diving underneath a foot-high fence, scraping the nose to the grass, and come up to the upward facing dog. And then kick back and start it again. Okay, so now we're warming up the upper body as well. And now, narrow your feet, guys, and we'll work into a one-leg Hindu push-up. A one-leg Hindu push-up. Very good, nice. Switch legs. Beautiful. And nice. Okay, from this position, we're simply going to bring one leg all the way up beside the hand of what we call a spider lunge position into a deep lunge, trying to work the elbow to the ground, and then stand up to a hamstring stretch. Deep lunge, hamstring stretch. So it's gonna be constant movement. Constant movement, down and up, okay? Try to work those arm, that elbow as close to the ground as possible. My right, beautiful, switch legs. Very little static stretch in our warm-up, but our athletes come out of it warmed up, ready to go. Um, there's a great amount of mobility and flexibility work going on.